Welcome to Copy Chief Radio. Today's show is a new breed episode where today's most innovative marketing and copywriting stars share their most effective methods for optimizing results in the fast changing world of direct response marketing. To check out all the Copy Chief Radio episode types, go to copychief.com forward slash CCR. Everybody, welcome. It's Kev. And I'm here with my good friend, Peter Hoppenfeld today. Peter is the attorney to the online marketing world. Anything you need to know or understand about compliance, intellectual property, copyright, these issues that are such a part of our lives. And let's be honest, we tend to avoid like uh, all the stuff that isn't fun to do. Peter keeps his finger on the pulse. Many of the people we all look up to are his private clients. If you're lucky enough to be in Peter's world, like I am, he often sends emails and updates about things that are happening, places people are putting their eyeballs where they maybe weren't recently. And so today we're going to talk about just basically what's the latest going on and what do we need to be thinking about and doing, you know, when it comes to can spam and, and email deliverability, compliance, especially Peter reads many sales letters every week to make sure they're compliant and people don't get in trouble. And as you know, there's been a lot of changes in the industry over the last year or so. So Peter, thanks again, man, for doing this. Well, this is round three in a series of three so far, Kevin. Yeah. yeah. If anybody hasn't heard Kevin and I do our interviews periodically, you should, because we have a good time doing it and we hope you have a good time listening. Yes, sir. Yeah. We have a lot in common. We've been instant friends since the day we sat across from each other at dinner in Park City, Utah. At Ryan Lee's famous, infamous Sam event. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Which was great. Which was awesome. And you and I, we bonded right away. And it's been 10 years, I think, maybe more. Wow. And that's something. That's great. Well, we were young. We were young. We're younger now than we, well, we were, whatever. We won't quote we, Bob we, we, right now. We were just kids then. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's talk about copy, you know, because that's kind of what we do copy. here. Yeah. Aside of being an attorney looking at things through the lens of compliance, you also have a lot of integrity just by nature. You're a very integrous person. And you see what I see all the time, which is, you know, crazy thing. When we actually write honest stuff, it ends up converting better than the big no bull shit, bullshit. Right? You know what, Kevin? And we've talked about this. When I look at copy, and I, I, I mean, I'll say, I've been involved in direct response marketing for 35 years. Mm-hmm. And new young writers come around and they think they got this great new hook. And it, <laughs> there's nothing new. Yeah. But hopefully it gets better. Right. I see the same old, same old tricks and I want to vomit. And it doesn't necessarily work, but everybody thinks it does. Right. So when I read copy, and I read copy in the health and wellness space, I will read copy in the financial stuff. I read it as a consumer first. Copywriters and creative thinkers and direct response marketers are in the business of getting conversions, opt-ins, sales, everything in between. And copywriters tend to want to push people's buttons, right? You got to push the buttons. But what happens often is that not only are you pushing a button, you're taking a mallet and you're you're smashing the shit out of the button. (laughs) Now, when I read it first as a consumer, I reach a point where I'm if I'm being so fucking overwhelmed. Yeah. I'm gone. Right. I'm gone. You have to have some some balance, some restraint in, in, right. in writing copy. The other thing yeah. I always look for is like if you and I went to a Bruce Springsteen concert together and we would love to. Yes. That's right. And if Roy Bitten hit a bad note on the piano, what would we remember? The bad note. Yeah. So I tell my clients all the time, avoid the clunkers. Your English yeah. has to be good. Your language has to be good. You have to artfully find that descriptive that fits the sentence. Because if it's right. if it sticks out like a bad note, guess what? I'm gone. It's not like yeah. the old days, the boardroom days of getting something in the mail. I click away, I'm gone. I have something else better to read. Oh, yeah. We need to write our copy. Well, I think there's like different sort of phases of it. Like I, I love what John Carlton says is write the outrageous version draft first knowing it, you're going to tone it way down, but just to get the juice to get this. But of course you'd never try to use that version. It's it's he, he jokes and says, it's the one you'd be fired or arrested for. <laughs> if anybody ever saw it, it, it's only for you as a draft. Okay. 
And then, you know, of course you, you make it compliant, you, but you keep that energy there. But then there's also, like you said, uh, uh, this next level of sort of like applying rest- restraint and making sure you're having a conversation with somebody about the real things and not just trying to, like you said, you read it. And if you start just getting that horrible feeling, like you're being, people know when they're being manipulated, they may subject themselves to it and even justify it, but nobody mistakes that feeling. I live by the saying, and I say this a lot, it's not what you say, it's what people hear. You got to really take the time and discipline to do it right. Look, we both understand the formulas that everybody uses. If I hear someone say, big farmer is going to shut this offer down again, I'm going to vomit. But I let it go. I think it's stupid. I think it shows a lack of real interest in writing good copy. Right. Or this is for the one percenter. You know, aren't you writing to a bigger audience? Uh, no? plenty, plenty of people in a one percent. Right. Yeah. It's, again, it's just it's like they just they're looking for those shortcuts, those hacks, the psychological right. hacks to getting the sale and. We could go into the whole episode about how that's not the way to build a business and you got to look at the long game. From a compliance point of view, I'll say it. My claim to fame is that I will take an offer and I work with clients and I try to understand their risk tolerance on a scale of one to 10. All right. Mm -hmm. A lot of the bigger law firms out there, their default by institutionally is to say, no, don't do it. Clean it up. Mm -hmm. So if we look at compliance on a scale of one to 10, a one or a zero is Make as many sales as you can and run as fast as you could. Remember the guys with the green coffee, Garcinoga, using Dr. Oz's name? And there's that mm-hmm. great video of the guys driving, escaping in Boca in their Lamborghinis. That's a zero. Then you could be at a 10, 100% compliant. And guess what? You sell nothing. You sell nothing. So what's the use of that? If I told my clients no every time, I wouldn't be on the phone with you because I, be, I wouldn't have a business. So I tend to think, Most of my clients are somewhere between a five and an eight, whether it's health and wellness or it's a financial publisher, a five and an eight. And what's the difference? Their risk tolerance, because everybody who's making a sale has converting copy is not compliant in some level. Interesting. You can't be because if you followed every letter of the law, there'd be no testimonials. There'd be no claims. There'd be no implication. Isn't it all our office really about implication, right? Dream to be like this person, aspire to be like that. Take all the ingredients and use in your mind that they're really curing your diabetes, but I won't use that word, right? Right. It's all implication. If you're 100% compliant, you're nowhere. Now, my clients, it's up to them what what risk they're willing to take. And then let's take a deep dive. You might be more riskier with warm traffic than cold because who's going to see it? Maybe you're a little bit more, you know, once your audience knows your voice, you can get away with more because they understand the wink and the nod. It's internal language, right? Yeah. So that's my my general philosophy here. So, so what do I see out there? So I see a lot of copy. A couple of years ago when Raging Bull happened and shut down a zero on a, on a compliance scale, a zero, Wow. right? Guess what? The industry needed it. Copy was bloated. Yeah. Copy was yeah. crazy. Right. And copy is better. I mean, some of my, a lot of my clients are loosening up a little bit more now. But what's so wrong about saying, start with $1,000 and make X? What's so wrong, meaning disclose your initial stake? What's wrong with talking about real rates of return? Okay. What's wrong with self-disclaiming? Some of the best copy I review, people self-disclaim. And guess what? Me as a consumer, that's the way I talk. That's the right. way you talk. But we get into, into sales copy speak. And there is no, you know, and it's like foreign. How You can't tell people that. They won't buy. Yes, they will. They'll trust you more. You know, I work with a lot of person, personality-driven offers and, and a lot of anonymous offers. The personality-driven offers work not because the guy is ultimately successful. It's because they tell their story about when they weren't. Right. So Raging Bull happens and people tightened up. And I did very well working with copy because it didn't mean be a, be a 10. It meant don't be a three. Okay? Right. Right. That's a very interesting insight. And so the takeaway there that I think not the thing people would expect to hear is like there really kind of is no compliance with and sales at the same time. Like at some level, no, everybody's breaking. Uh, okay. I take the position that compliance is relative. Okay. It's not absolute. There's a lot of pictures about compliance. It's not just your copy. Yeah. It's the quality of your product. It's your customer care. 
It's your ability to fulfill. It's your business reputation. It's yeah. your integrity. It's your copy. All of the above. All of the above. Okay. So but I wanted to get like sort of like um, tangible with this because okay. seems like, I mean, we just take what happened to financial newsletter publishers over the last, you know, since, since Raging Bull, right? What was just a little over a year ago? Yeah. Essentially. Okay. So first it was Facebook where this big, no, oh, we, we're all, everybody's getting kicked off of Facebook and they're like, I don't know. Nobody can get an agent on the phone and explain anything. It's like, I, I can't even. So, and then the FTC came and said, no, 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 no. And then a bunch of people got sued. I just, by the way, talked to somebody, won't say their name off without permission, but one of the big copy chiefs at one of the biggest Agora imprints, mm -hmm. Agora being a famous, you know, the biggest. And, and full disclosure, I work with them. Yes. Okay. And he told me, he's like, it was a, it was a shit show. It was a nightmare, but the copy's so much better now. It's exactly better now. I want people to understand a lot of what, what was disseminated. The rumor mill in the direct response writing world, creative world, mm -hmm. is crazy. Yeah. The old game of telephone, remember? Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, I say tomato and 10 people later, it's a nuclear bomb. Okay. A lot of what happened post-Raging Bull became a self-fulfilling self prophecy where I'm going to tighten up everything because I don't want to ruin the goose that laid the golden egg, okay? Even though it's, I don't need to, but I want to because I don't want to ruin what I've built, which means I'm tightening up what I'm going to allow, which works its way down from the copy chief to the copywriter. But meanwhile, the copywriters are incentive-based. They're right. incentive-based. Right. And they're not getting their copy approved because ultimately the boardroom model is happening where copywriters are competing to become the control. And if they can't get anything approved, they can't make any money. Any money right, yeah. So they leave, which translates on the street to such and such places in trouble because they're not making any sales. The answer is no. Such and such place should have, at the same time they were tightening up their internal protocols, changed their compensation plan. Hmm. Okay? So there's institutional stuff going on. From yeah. my point of view, I think some of the stuff that I was seeing on a high level, I'm not mentioning any names, was irrational, but it was like putting a moat around a kingdom. Right, right. And if it was meant making $5 million less a year to save 100, right. okay, so be it. Right. On the other hand, the smaller clients I work with cleaned some copy, got more genuine, were more direct. Their VSL scripts went from 80 page, 80 pages. If you can't say it, in 20 pages, what's wrong with you? Yeah. It became shorter. It became tighter. It be had a better rhythm to it. And they did fine. Yeah. Imagine a lawyer talking about the rhythm of copy. I love it. Well, we're music people. Look, I get it. I know there's so many communities. I'm doing air quotes. Communities. For entrepreneurs out there, all filled with their own version of overnight experts chirping at you from behind the screen. You got your Facebook groups, your, your clubhouse rooms, just experts galore. Uh, how often do you feel like you're being pinballed around from thing to thing and picking up a little bit, a little piece there? How much of that is actually making it into your, your brain and your fingers and your business and affecting your money? How many of these people are actually out there in the field getting their hands dirty and testing to find out what actually works and what flops? Well, in the copy chief community, a real community, you get shoulder to shoulder with the most active, successful marketers working in the trenches today, all while learning from industry legends who rarely teach anywhere else, if ever. Copy chief is an amazing community, super newbie friendly. Also, you'll find, you know, elite level uh, marketers and copywriters in there. They're all working to become the best at their craft, get paid top dollar for their skills, stay ahead of the competition by keeping their finger on the pulse of what's working now. That's the X factor when you're backed up by a community and you can get any question you have answered by people who actually do this stuff and can tell you from real world experience what to do for your project, for your offer, for your funnel, for your clients. Man, you're unstoppable when you've got that kind of confidence. 
Go check us out at copychief.com forward slash join. If you've never been a member, you're going to see what you've been missing and you're going to say, where has this been all my life? And if you've been a, a member in the past, I would invite you to come and check out all the new stuff. We've completely updated all the tech. So we're on brand new platforms. Everything is slick and smooth and easy to access. And it's just, it's never been better. Copychief.com forward slash join. I'll look for you inside. What typically gets the FTC's attention? Aside from a task force in a particular global niche area, mm -hmm. complaints. Complaints, yeah. Complaints, money, and headlines. Complaints, so, money, headlines. People being Not flashy. Enough people are being harmed yeah. to bring the paternalistic element of, the, of a regulatory body into play. Yeah. And then the FTC lives by press release as well. And now, money, meaning yeah. they're, they're, they're rich enough to go after it and, and get a nice, right. even a fine is going to be Victimization, a, a good day. Okay. Yeah. Now, they've also gotten artful. In November, they put out a advisory. They sent letters to a thousand, couple of thousand E and, and, and brick and mortar retailers. And they yep. said to the world, and the, the target was testimonials, endorsements, and reviews. Look, we know people are using fake reviews. Please don't. The FTC said, hello, world, we're staking the flag. Don't cross this line. And the way they did it, they didn't send these letters to people who were under investigation. They said, Re name brand retailers from A to Z, names that people would recognize if it hit the news. Hello, Walmart. Just telling you, if you use false reviews, if you use, have problems with endorsements or testimonials or claims, be warned, we told you. And if you violate, we're going straight to penalty phase. They used a procedural trick. But what did that end up doing? It's, I sent it updates to everybody. You got one from me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and they said to the world, just know, they've already announced what their interest is. Now, back in the Raging Bull time, after Raging Bull, which was a, obviously a big headline, why? All the lying and cheating and a lot of money. They also came out like two weeks later with an advisory about operation income or something. And what it was, was an amalgamation of every investigation nationwide, not just FTC, that dealt with people making claims about earnings. So they fashioned it into a pretty effective public relations campaign. Not a bad way. I'm not yeah. completely against these initiatives. They're doing their job. Right. And they got to show people that they're doing their job and that's how they do it. Right. So they, get, they so, need funding too. And, and, right. You know. So you asked the, back to the question, how, what, what gets the FTC's attention? They yeah. either are on a mission with a broad-based task force, like a big brush, so avoid the brush, or you have a lot of disgruntled customers, a lot of complaints with local attorney generals or BBBs, and you ignore them. Yeah. You ignore them. Most of the time when you read the press releases, people ignored them. Don't do that. You know, it's Don't funny, man. The first sort of marketing job I had, the most in the trenches part of it was I was in charge of protecting our BBB record for a timeshare resale company, a very shady industry. But this, this company was very, very much trying to be legit. I would went to arbitration a handful of times, five or six times. And it mm -hmm. was very interesting. I recommend this for every business owner to have to defend your sales tactics in such an environment because being in that, on that hot, and I never lost one, I was very proud, I never lost one. But that's why I had to make sure every call was being monitored and recorded. And if I knew I had a case, I had to go listen to that recording and say, this is what I heard. Yeah. And if it was, it was bad, if the guy was pitching heat, I would just give them their money back and say, there's an arbitration, we were wrong. Right. right. But if you've never had to defend it, this is why you can't, you, you know, you can't claim ignorance. You know what I mean? You can't say, oh, well, I didn't, that wasn't my department. I was just trusting the sales yeah. manager. It's like, <laughs> you, know. you know, like I'll say it again. Compliance is everything. Yeah. Compliance is everything. But how, how unfair is it? People complain all the time. Oh, they're always changing the rules, always moving the no. line. Not, no, no. not really. Not really. Rules have been pretty consistent. Yeah. And the rules are pretty matter of fact. Okay. Mm. They really are. Don't, they, don't, they make, don't. When you look at them as a consumer, they make sense. Yeah.
Don't lie, don't manipulate. Don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal. Give people their money back if they're not happy. Don't harm them. Don't don't pitch right. snake oil. Yeah. Speaking Perfect. of snake oil. <laughs> Here's a, it, this is what came to mind. What's with the, you know, the robocalls and all that stuff? It's huh? horrible. And the, and the FTC has shut down a lot of them. But I, I, well, I don't know what it is about my car warranty. What the, really? <laughs> well, yeah, they've seen your car, Peter. <laughs> nice. I just bought two used cars. It's horrendous. Yeah. I got a phone call. That we have a we have a hard line, a hard phone line, at our house. My kids think I'm out of my mind. Why do you need that for? But we do. We have it. It's sentimental. It's there. And right. the phone rang last night. And I actually answered it. I don't know why. And the guy said, "You just called me from this number." And I said, "Ah, the robot stole it. I'm sorry. What are you going to do? I I don't like it. It's horrible. Look, that really. Let me let me segue for a second. Okay, go ahead. Let's let's understand. We all agree how annoying that is. Yeah. Yes. On a scale of one to ten, everybody, everyone raise your hand. It's annoying. Yes. Okay. A lot of clients come to me, mostly newbies, and say, "Well, I want to send text messages out." Guess what's really annoying? Yeah. Bro, Getting more yeah. than one text message. You yeah. want an yeah, automatic way for people to opt out? Keep battering them with text messages. It's very personal. Now, look, transactional stuff is fine, but. But marketers right. can't help themselves. They want to smash the freaking button and push people's buttons. And they think by inundating it with text messages, it's going to work. Guess what it's going to do? It's going to incite people to type the word stop. Right. Yeah. So all these great ideas, you have to balance it with right. the fact that there's a real person on the other side of your campaign. Yeah. Especially when you go straight to their phone, it should be uh, if they just were on your site or asked for some information and you send them a text and it's actually personal and there's somebody there waiting on the other end going, Hey, if you want to have a call about this, that's one thing, right? That's relevant. Right. Immediately relevant, but spam is spam. Correct. Speak, speaking of spam, can spam email spam. deliverability. Can spam. can spam is a plague that is, that is causing shakedowns on many of my major, major big emailing clients, mostly using affiliate networks. OK, not individual affiliate relationship, affiliate networks. The California class action bar is horrendous, horrendous for ADA compliance on a website. Excuse me. And for can spam. I have multiple clients using, again, the networks, which are legendarily bad at scrubbing lists or giving a crap about scrubbing lists. So let's understand if you are a marketer using email marketing, you are responsible if the message is yours, regardless of whether somebody else mailed it. Ultimately, the mm -hmm. buck stops on your desk. So what is happening? There are professional plaintiffs, a lot of them. Their names show up on email lists. And guess what? It's not just not the unsubscribes that cause you liability. It's the ability to claim that a subject line is, is misleading mm -hmm. or a from is not real. And ultimately, the, the company making the offer or whose product or service is being sold is responsible. So we have the same cast of characters, the same plaintiffs bringing complaints. And guess what? The, the reason that they're coming in is because the affiliate networks don't scrub their lists or the affiliate networks let their people change copy. OK, right. so yeah. please, it might seem like a fast buck, but it's not necessary. It's, it's, it's troublesome. Bigger issue is a specific ISP. In Salt Lake City, I shared an update with Kevin. It's available to anybody who wants it on this, this call. It's a company called X Mission. They are an ISP in Utah, and the Utah can spam law allows an ISP to allege that emails are misleading and a violation of the Utah can spam law because they suspect the message is misleading, the subject line is misleading, or the from is not right. And what they it's part of their business model. And their claims are not two, three, five thousand dollars at a clip like in California. No, 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 no. Their claims are for a quarter of a million dollars, a half a million dollars, one point five million dollars. And they prosecute them. They come after you. I have two clients in the middle of litigation right now, and it is a despicable shakedown. There is a suppression list. They had uh, had had a litigation with ClickBank. ClickBank initially as I understand, didn't take it seriously until they got sued and they settled. And if, you, if you're an affiliate on ClickBank, you are led to that suppression list to take those domains off your list. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's public a public list. I am glad to share it. 
I am inviting anybody and everybody, take all emails using those domains off your list. Okay? Boycott Utah. Trust mm-hmm. me. It's, it's important. Give you another example. The best way to win here is to publicize the plaintiffs and the emails that are causing people agita. I've had one particular guy, one guy, who kept showing up everywhere with my clients until guess what? All of my clients took his name off their list and told all the affiliates to take their name off their list. Yeah. Okay? We put him out of business. He has to get a job now. Wow. Yeah, briefly so. So please, Kevin, I know you're going to give contact information. That update about X mission is for everybody. And so I know you, you're good at responding to contact. So Peter Hoppenfeld, just like it sounds, two P's.com or badassattorney.net is where right. you can find or Peter. P, and P Hoppenfeld at gmail.com. Just email me. Yeah, that's very good. P-H-O-P-P-E-N-F-E-L-D at gmail.com. By the way, I, I bought the URL, the URL badassattorney.net because I was doing a lot of live events and I'd be on a, like on a panel and usually by the time you get to the panel, everybody in the room's kind of slumbering and they yeah. would, you know, go across the panel and they would say, you know, give your name and, and website. And I figured a good way to get people's attention was to use the badass attorney <laughs> Get back in here. You got to hear this guy. <laughs> All right. Great stuff, Peter. Last thing that just came on my radar, you know, is all these, these pirating sites. What's the ph- philosophy should I take on that? It's, some guy just offered what seems to be a fair deal, like $600 a month to monitor this, to, to, to go after him, to try to get him removed. Is this a whack, an endless game of whack-a-mole where, you know, those aren't your real customers? Who cares about people that live in dungeons? Like, you know, what, how do you... The, the answer is it's, it's twofold. Just like I talked about compliance being a zero or a 10, right? This yeah. continuum. The fact that people are copying you, at least for the moment, take it as a badge of honor that you yeah. matter, okay? Yeah. My experience is if you bother them enough with a takedown or cease and desist letter, they disappear eventually. They disappear pretty rapidly and they okay. resurface. Some of the services are good. I would ask them for, ref- for a reference the good old fashioned way and talk to somebody and say, did it really work for you? But yes, yeah. it's aggravating when you have a $999 training program that's being sold out of who knows where for 29 bucks. Right. They go or, you know, buys. you're a New York Times bestseller and the next day, on Amazon is a ripoff of your book, you know? Yeah. But it means people are paying attention to you. So you're doing something right, but fuck those guys. Yeah. Horrible. Right. That's how I take it. Like, like, they, because they have the, this whole language they have is like, it's worth the cred. <laughs> That's how they rate things, right? You, they, they buy credits and so it's like worth the cred. I'm like, oh, good. Glad I'm worth the cred. Your, your, <laughs> your, your fake tokens. All right. Awesome. Peter, thank you so much, man. This was a, a great, okay. like, quick rundown. Anything we didn't cover that, that like red alert, you want people to know? Not red alert, just a call to action to to like, you know, just there's nothing wrong with genuine message. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with, you know, well-written genuine message. The truth works. I think hat is what uh, Agora instituted, Bill and and Mark. I think it's honesty, authenticity and transparency, stuff that everybody dismisses as buzzwords, but they matter. Those things you know, matter. You know, the other thing we we I t- we talked a little bit. We joked about those common tricks. You know, you know, big farm is going to shut this down yeah. or live like the one percent. Ultimately, somebody created that because it was new. So right. I, I tell a lot of my clients, my most successful clients are the ones who took a little bit from here and a little bit from there, and it's all derivative. But they created something new from it, a new paradigm. You know, Ryan Levesque figured out his thingy, Pedro Odeo, yeah. the quizzes, and now Pedro yeah. Odeo is doing challenges. Well, that, 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 that's a derivative of a lot of things, you know? I mean, right. John Benson, you know, was a good friend of the ESL thing. But yeah. so work to create the next paradigm, the next method that really works well. Yeah. And let that be your challenge, you know? It's, I'm, I'm not, it, be aspirational yourself, because it'll up the quality of the work. Don't imitate, innovate. Yes, sir. And make sure you're doing it right by contacting P. Hoppenfeld at gmail.com. And uh, yeah. join, join the Copy Chief community and yes. let, let we'll, Kevin be your guide. We'll keep you straight. Peter, thank you so much, my man. We, okay, we'll do it right. again soon. Appreciate, Appreciate you. you so much. Thanks, Kevin. Hey, don't forget your goodies. 
head over to copychief.com slash copychiefradio to get some great free stuff to help you put the things you hear on the show into action for your business. Copychief.com forward slash CCR. <laughs>